Good Friday morning. We are getting ready to head out to Racine. We're going to Repoint Marina. We got the crew of Half Nuts with us. Do you guys like a water? First mate didn't do her hair yet, so she doesn't want to be on camera. Uh, we're just uh, getting loaded up. Would you get me a nice tea, please? Uh, and oh, no. or a pop or whatever. So there is a crew of Half Nuts, second edition with this new Diesel Titan. And of course, we got the mighty Ram hooked up to the nice rinker. So, what do you say we go boating, Sir William? Sounds like a plan. All right, so our first stop, we gotta put in in Waukegan, and then we're gonna venture on up from Waukegan. We're gonna go to Racine's Reef Point Marina for at least one night. And depending on weather, uh, our plan is hopefully to cross Lake Michigan and stay on Michigan side somewhere. Right now we've got a couple slips tentatively at Ludington, but right now the wave forecast is not looking favorable. So we may end up going up the west coast and uh, going to Milwaukee, possibly Port Washington, maybe Sheboygan, I don't know. So come along for the journey. We have arrived to Waukegan. See the water way out there. So we go here into the parking lot. And we're going to get the boats ready to put in. I think we're going to do a video at some time about ramp etiquette because there's a lot of people that don't have very good ramp etiquette. And this is how you start. One of the things you do is you don't pull up to the freaking boat ramp with your boat all covered up and not loaded and all that stuff. You pull over to the trailer parking lot and you get your boat ready to go in the water so that all you do is get over there, dump in the water, and get out. It should take no more than five minutes to put your boat in the water. So, we're going to go ahead and get the boat ready. Here we go. It's part of our ramp etiquette series, or ramp etiquette video that I'm uh, doing here. Just want to show you a couple other things. So, before you get to the ramp, make sure you get the straps undone. And you get lines put on so that when you back down, you're able to grab hold of the boat, or your first mate is. So I usually tie that up. Get your strap and your safety chain undone unless you've got a roller trailer you don't want it rolling off but with a bunk trailer like this it don't go anywhere and so we got straps off make sure your boat plugs in very important all straps are off she's gonna get a couple fenders out on the side that we want to go in make sure all your coolers all your bags everything is loaded because all you want to do is pull in, back down the ramp, splash the boat, pull out, and park. That quick. Should not take any more than five minutes at the ramp. Same thing coming out. You pull the boat out, you come over to this parking lot, then you put your cover on, and you put your straps on, and you get everything done. Don't hold up everybody else at the boat ramp. So that's my rant. My rant. I get so frustrated when I come out and see these people that have to pull their boats out and start wiping them down and start taking stuff out and do that at the ramp holding up everybody else. Hate that. Pet peeve of mine. So, we're almost ready. We're getting ready to pull in there and we're going to get these boats in the water. Billy's getting his prepped. So, let's go get wet. Okay, so... Here's just how you uh, get in and out quick. Luckily the ramp's not very busy. I'm gonna get Billy. Turn off my park meter. Take this last stall. A little tougher to navigate, but we get her over here. So as you can see, I get her straight down. Should only be five minutes. Really shouldn't even take five minutes. We got the 
fenders out, got the line ready. I get it fairly close to the dock so that Miss Beck's not reaching so far. I generally put it in four wheel drive. Alright, Miss Beck's got the line. We're on the clock. We're going in the water. We get about a couple feet away from the dock, just so I don't hit it. Back her down in. I put the truck in four wheel drive in case the rear tires get slippery. She floats it off. Pull her out, and just like that, boat's in the water, and we're not holding up anybody else. We go over to the trailer lot, park the trailer, come back, and go boating. That's, that's boat ramp etiquette. Don't be this guy, hogging up the entrance while people are trying to get in and out with their trailers as he's getting his boat prepared. Don't be this guy. Do it in the parking lot. Trailer's parked, truck's ready to go. Billy's got his parked. We're gonna get in the water. We've made it. Got the boat in the water, and now we're off to Racine. So far, the lake doesn't look too bad. We'll see once we get out here. Definitely cooler. 90 some back there, but it feels cooler. Alright, All right, we are enjoying some adult beverages on our boats so you can see in the background first mate got some margarita mix as well as i do this is our living conditions for the couple nights at least or at least one night crew of half nuts is sitting back enjoying adult beverages and it's a beautiful night for being a hot oppressive 90 degree day end up turning out nice we got a cool breeze it's probably gonna get cold tonight probably have to have the heat on but uh, it is relatively nice. Got a little breeze out of the south, but coming across the water, it adds some uh, coolness to it. So I'll give you a look around here where we're at. So we're right close to the brew house, which is a great restaurant bar. We're gonna go up and get some ice cream before the ice cream place closes. Closes at eight o'clock. And it's roughly 7.30. So we gotta have ice cream. We got our attention. We have entered the ship's store where the women are automatically drawn to the sail shells. Look, Scott. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. How cute is that? So we're gonna get us some ice cream. Where it says right here to treat yourself. Nice. Uh, Mackinac Island fudge in the dessert. chocolate <laughs> waffle cone. Okay, sounds good. Is that what you're gonna get? I'm gonna get the oh. chocolate Zanzibar. Okay. Let's see if that's good. How is it? Good. It's like, yeah, it looks like coffee. Hmm? Caramel. Coffee? Oh, it's caramel. Caramel collision? Uh, Mackinac, Mackinac Island. Sorry, Mackinac. mixing things up now. Too much ice cream. I'm getting ice cream. I got ice cream. I'm using my Who screams for ice cream? We all scream for ice cream. You want to be on? <laughs> you want to be on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> so the guy at the marina. There's three of us. <laughs> Partial gonads. You can hear it, but they're a uh, band playing right here at the brew house. So we're sitting here on the front of our boats, 
best seats in the house. Best seats in the house. Enjoying. What do we got here? We got uh, margaritas. Layman's term margaritas. Thanks to our friends. Mark Thanks to our friends, Terry. Mark and Terry, for the wonderful Yeti cups. Personalized. So we're going to sit here and enjoy this beautiful Fourth of July weekend kickoff from the brew house in Racine, Racine Harbor, Reef Points Harbor, Racine, Wisconsin. Good morning, good Saturday morning. <clears throat> we're up and around, it's uh, 1030 and uh, looks like we're going to head across. We're going to go over to Muskegon, Michigan. We got a couple slips over there at the, uh, what was the name of the harbor? Muskegon something or other. Uh, no, Harbor Town. Harbor Town in Muskegon, so we're going to go check it out. Uh, waves are 1 to 3 right now. Uh, 2 to 4 could be building this afternoon, so hopefully it won't be too rocky. But uh, we've got the navigation all set up. We've got both uh, Navionics and I got our low ranch built in set up. We're going to cross today. I'm so excited. We're so excited, so we're going to make our big crossing. First time ever. And uh, should take about three hours or so, depending on the waves. But uh, we're looking forward to it. So, one last look around here at Racine. We're getting ready, putting our stuff away, and uh, getting ready to make the big crossing. So, we'll see you over on the other side. Okay, so we're doing this. We are crossing to the Michigan side today. How do we feel? We feel awesome. We're going over to Muskegon. Here we go. Our good friends right in front of us. Should be about three hours roughly. Hopefully the water two rounds. See you on the other side. On this little beach here in uh, Lake Muskegon, which is a nice little inland lake here where our harbor is. See, still some people out at the beach doing some swimming. They got uh, a lot of hobies. Got sand between your toes. Got sand on my toes. Very good. So we got to do some off-roading here through this dune grass to get back to the boat because we were just out looking at the water. Yeah. If we come across another fence. Good Sunday morning from live from. Good morning. Where Muskegon? Muskegon. From Muskegon Harbor Town Marina. So we're getting ready with a group of half nets to go to see a U.S. submarine called. 
USS Silversides. They have a museum and a submarine that we can tour. So come along, we'll take you with us. Well, we are coming up on the submarine museum. I don't know if we get the tour. It looks like we might be able to get the tour of this boat too. This looks like a Coast Guard cutter. The McLean. There it is, USS Silversides. Very cool. Well, sorry for the wind noise, but it is pretty breezy here. Hopefully you can hear it. Ooh, it's air conditioned. This is a hedgehog. Anti submarine weapon. Oh, shoots out depth charges. So, we got our tickets to uh, do the boat tour. So, we're going to go check out the Coast Guard cutter first. And then we'll do a guided tour. Let's see what this big thing is submarine rescue chamber. Turned it to raise it up and down. The other seat, you turned it to move it back and forth. That's Imagine my job. Imagine firing that set on that Crank her up. All right, here. Look at your sight. I got him in my sights. Fire. Boom. Look at the size of this windlass. That is a huge windlass. Beautiful inlet to Lake Wa Lake Muskegon. Les Muskegon. Keep saying it wrong. Look at the hatch. Let's go check out the rest of this here ship. Look down this gun barrel. Pretty cool boat. This is a Coast Guard Ooh. boat. That's their beds. Oh, good night. We'll get down there and check it out. Right up there. Oh my god. Up or in first? Uh, let's go in. Go in first? Let's go in. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Steps. Yeah, go to the front. Get smaller. Get down the stairs. Alright, this is a head here. And a shower. Smells like an old boat, doesn't it? There's, yeah. a sh there's the head. Head and shower over there. Let's see. Ooh, this is the engine room. Oh, you can see the engine room down there. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Big diesels. Jeez, that's huge down there. Electrical panels. Which side? I'll follow you. It's gonna be rough on Lori. Oh, Lori. Wardroom. Officers. Dining. So this is where they do dining. This must be the uh, office. Oh. Well, it'd be kind of warm down here, wouldn't it? Here's the galley. Here's the galley, and here's the dining area. But this is the officers' dining. Well, this looks more like where the enlisted you would be. So, so this is at the forward end of the boat. Here's where all really the crew sleeps. Man, can you imagine sleeping on that? That's short for even me. Just think of all those guys snoring at the same time. It takes shifts. How hot it'd be. What's this one? What's CPO? Corporal, are that my or yeah, something? Yeah. Officer? Yeah, those are probably the officers. So, yep, yeah, that would be the officers' beds. Wow. Not a whole lot That's fancier. Sleep. Yeah. Scott, you wouldn't even fit on one of those. I wonder what this thing is. I know. Man, if you were yet, it'd be a short sailor. So, man, two, four, six, eight, oh, that's eight, how you get up to the hatch. If you had to get up quick, 28 crew members can sleep here. 28 cots. What's this? this thing is? What does it say on the front? Chrysler Corporation Spirit Jump Com Compass? Compass? Oh, that's a compass. Oh, that's huge. Okay. 
What's up there? More sleeping. More sleeping? Are you serious? One, two, three. Oh my. Yeah, there's 32 crew members. Boy. Plus the officers. What, there are four officer suites? I haven't been on that side yet. We got no windows in here to, no, no. cool air. Man, hide in here. Jesus. Oh, geez, there's even. There's more up front. Like storage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's more up front. Like storage? It's almost looks like a little tiny workshop. Oh, mechanical room. Yep. Carpenter shop. Yep. That's where you'd be, Billy. That's where Billy would be. Good night, it's hot here. Right here's, right here's heaters even. There's radiators. Yeah, there's heaters. I can't imagine there's air though. Oh, no. That's your only air coming in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they got fans. Oh, the beds wow. aren't exactly what you call them. Nice. No, I wouldn't call it nice, but well, you got Very a fan there. going on at least. You got a closet and a little dresser. It pays to be the officer, I guess. There's two beds in that two one. Beds in that one. Let's go check out the helm. See what it's all about. Driving a boat. Hey, Captain. Captain. Look at that. Captain. Bill. Boy, that looks like a barber chair. Yeah, it's actually pretty comfortable. <laughs> Best seat in the house. Well, if you could open these windows, it'd be probably get a nice breeze in here. Full engines forward. It says do not touch. I knew you'd touch it. I knew I'd touch it. <laughs> Would you touch Here, stand by. Can the I stand by the wheel? Yeah. There's your navigation. <laughs> We are inside the museum. USS Revolta, last known location. If it would have stayed at the museum. Also, uh, if you're not from here, welcome to West Michigan. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm your tour guide. I'm also happy to be a submarine veteran. However, I was a little bit uh, too young to have been on a boat like this. Keel was laid on November 4th of 1940. She was actually launched in August of 1941, and she was commissioned uh, for active service in December of 15th of 1941, so about eight days after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, one of the things the uh, Japanese did not consider the submarine force to be a threat, so when they attacked Pearl Harbor, they focused on um, the battleships. Uh, what, so while we were rebuilding the fleet, it was a submarine force that went and met the Japanese and uh, the Japanese learned that they were uh, much more of a threat than they thought they were. Uh, the Silver Sides is 312 feet in length and uh, 27 feet at the beam. The pressure hull, or what we would call the people tank, is 311 feet 9 inches long and it's uh, 16 feet in diameter. Silver Sides was considered to be one of the luckiest uh, submarines in the fleet. Only one person was killed during World War II in action on the, on the Silver Sides. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and start here. This is the 5 inch deck gun. 5 inch deck gun has a range of about 9 miles. Okay, now you'll see a bunch of things painted on the sail. Uh, the top stuff looks like ribbons and medals. These are the awards the Silver Sides won uh, during World War II. All those. Um, below that, uh, you have the ships that uh, the Silver Sides sank. Silver Sides is one of the most successful boats in the fleet during World War II. She had, she did 14 total uh, combat war patrols. She was number three in the ships that she sank, and she was a uh, number fifth in the, uh, she was fifth in the in the Navy, uh, the submarine force in uh, the amount of tonnage that she actually sank. So you'll see uh, where it says uh, sunk. If it's a white flag with a little red dot, that would be a Japanese civilian ship, so uh, cargo ships, they were trying to stop supplies from getting into Japan. The ones with the uh, rising sun flares, those are Japanese uh, naval vessels. Those were actual warships they sunk. Below that are the ones that she damaged. She sank 30 ships, she damaged, I think, 16. Uh, or 14. Uh, then below that, you're gonna see a, a parachute. During her 13th to 14th war patrol, the Silver Sides rescued two downed uh, pilots in the Pacific Ocean. And uh, right before that, during uh, that same time frame, she uh, was used to disarm and uh, take out 16 uh, mines. I have no idea how she did it, but she took out 16 mines. The wood was uh, used for the top side decks of the uh, submarines. I guess the wood handled very well with uh, salt water. 
And also, again, you can see the water can flow uh, through this rather freely when they would submerge or surface. Uh, we have the five inch deck gun here. You have a guy sitting there, another guy sitting there, and you had a guy here that would load it uh, from those two canisters there. And of course, if they ran out, they would grab more uh, ammunition from that, uh, the ammunition scuttle that protrudes up. There's all the medals and awards. Going down into the belly of the sab. Oh, wow. Going down. Looks like you're in a building that's not complete or something with all. Going into the tube. Oh, it's cool down here. Yeah, this upper deck is just all structure to hold up the platform. Ooh. But here's the actual sub. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, if you didn't have that on there, I would have done that. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. They have all that. Uh... Oh, we have two torpedo rooms on this type of submarine. of one forward and one aft. Forward torpedo room, we have six torpedo tubes. You can see four of them right there. The other one, if you kind of look, it's uh, below decks a bit. Uh, or even farther below decks. We are below decks. <laughs> but uh, they are um, 21 inch uh, in diameter and 20, these tubes are 21 feet in length. And if you go back aft, those tubes are 23 feet in length. Uh, the same diameter though. You just have uh, some more equipment. They want to make sure the torpedo could clear through. Uh, you know, you got your screws and props and other type of equipment back there that the, the, uh, the torpedo had to pass through. Uh, the torpedoes that we would shoot would be a Mark 14 torpedoes. The ones you see outboard here, those would be the torpedoes that we would fire. Uh, these type of torpedoes were, uh, you kind of had to aim the boat like you would aim a rifle, you know, mm -hmm. point at what you want to shoot and then you'd fire the, the <laughs> torpedo and it would go. Um, also these torpedoes were steam driven torpedoes. So if you ever watch the World War II movies and you see a, a torpedo in the water and they've got that little trail behind it, that's a steam trail, it's not a, not a wake. Uh, the, the torpedoes we use nowadays are the Mark 48 ADCAP torpedoes. I've worked on those. Uh, and they have, they're fueled by something called auto fuel. And I had heard back in a long time ago before auto fuel was used that they had a certain type of alcohol they used as the fuel. And what they told me is some of the torpedo and would drink a bunch of the fuel on the torpedoes. I don't know how true that is. I don't know how true that is. They could have just been messing with me, but that's a story. I, that was cool. Bid? We'll go ahead. This will be our room. <laughs> we get a room? This is uh, officer's, officer's country, so this is where the officers would sleep and eat. Uh, we're actually, right now, we're standing on top of the forward battery compartment. Uh, there is a uh, uh, hatch right there that you're standing on, and that hatch would be a sailor would have to go down there once a day to check on the battery, make sure everything was operating correctly. Uh, battery, you know, powered again all the electronics here, and also it would power uh, propulsion if we needed it to. When you were submerged, that's how you. Uh, Use the ship at propulsion. Oh, this looks like. Look at the big gauges. Ooh, Lori can read those gauges. Hey. I mean. Man, lots and lots of gauges. Look here, I'll show you how deep you were. Is that everybody? Okay, okay we're in control. This control room here would kind of be like the uh, brain brain center of the entire boat. Uh, unfortunately, they don't let us go into the conning tower. Now, this type of particular boat would operate actually on the, I know it's called a submarine, but it operated on the surface actually most of the time. Uh, so the captain spent a lot of time in the conning tower there. Uh, conning tower, you have, uh, you know, you can look out the periscopes from there. Uh, so anyway, when they had to go ahead and submerge, they would, you know, tell everyone they're going to dive the boat. Everybody would come rushing down here through that ladder. They would shut everything up there, uh, and when everything was closed, they could dive the boat within 37 seconds. The control room. How cool is that? Look at all the gauges, everything brass. Yeah, it was somebody's job to keep those all polished. Yeah, had to know yeah. what's going on. Yeah, how'd you know what's what's what? All the piping everywhere. Wow. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep, through another bulkhead. Uh, this would be where the crew would, would eat their eat their meals. Also, they could, you know, if they weren't working and nothing was going on, they'd be in here. They 
they'd hang out, they'd watch, you know, and the, they'd, now they watch movies back then, I don't know if they had any kind of uh, equipment for that, but they would listen to records or, you know, music, play cards, read books, that kind of stuff, you know, they do the same things that we do nowadays on, on a cruise mess. Uh, the meal schedule was uh, morning morning for breakfast about 7.30. Uh, around noon you'd do lunch. They would have a snack prepared around 3.30 and then a dinner would be at uh, about 7.30, 8 o'clock, something like that. Um, you had two cooks, uh, two cooks and a baker. And this, so the first room here, that is the galley. That's actually where you would uh, cook your meals. So the meals would get cooked there and then of course they, they would just take them, they would bring them to the officers, to the, to the pantry there, serve the officers. Um, Again, like I said, you had two cooks and they had to be good. Uh, you see, uh, submarine service is an all-volunteer service. Uh, you have to volunteer to be a submarine. They can't draft you and say, you're going to a submarine. It doesn't work that way. So when I went in, I had to volunteer. So when I picked my rating, which is sub missile technicians, submarines only rating, I was basically volunteering to go to submarine school and go be on a submarine. Uh, in fact, when I was in submarine school, they had a guy who was a cook who volunteered and he was he got booted in sub school because his ears wouldn't pop. So if your ears were pop, he wasn't able to go ahead and be on a submarine then. Um, but uh, it, it's a volunteer service, and this actually goes back to uh, the American Revolution, where this tradition starts. Uh, we, of course, didn't really have a Navy in the American Revolution. Our Navy consisted of uh, basically pirates. And uh, so I don't remember it was the Siege of Boston or New York City, but there was the HMS Eagle was, in the, was the flagship for the British, and they were in the harbor. And uh, so someone had created this one-man submersible called the Turtle. And the Turtle was manned by a guy named uh, Sergeant Ezra Lee. And Sergeant Lee volunteered for the, for the assignment. And uh, the mission did not, it didn't work, it didn't, didn't it failed. Uh, and uh, now there's debate, I've heard whether the Turtle actually existed or not. But uh, that's the tradition now. So because of Sergeant Lee, uh, everybody who's on a, on a submarine is a volunteer. Uh, and they give you perks for volunteering. One of the perks is submarines considered to be a hazardous duty, especially in World War II. So if you were on a submarine, you got extra money. So you get your submarine pay, you get your base pay for being in. You'd also, if you're on a seagoing command, you got pay for being uh, on, at sea. And then you also got an extra pay on top of that called submarine pay to be on a submarine. Another one of the perks they tried to get guys to volunteer was they said the submarine food was the best in the uh, fleet, and it was. So the uh, submariners are not jealous about airing out their feelings if they're angry, or uh, whining or complaining or just telling people off. And uh, so if the cook was not good, he would hear about it. So uh, they would, they, uh, they, we did have the best food. You wanna stay on board tonight? Just sleep right here. Sleep right here. They do have, the, the, the scouts stay the night here. They That's asked me if I want to do that. I said I was fine. <laughs> I don't need to do this anymore at all, so. Wow, that does not look. I, I did it for 10 years, I'm good. I did not look. But this is, uh, okay, this is the crew's birthing. So most of the crew actually slept here. Uh, before I get too much under that, below us is the aft battery well. So they had a guy that would go and check. There's a deck hatch somewhere around here. And they would go ahead and someone, a sailor would have to go below decks and check. The, well, we are below decks, but farther below decks and check the battery well, make sure that was good. Uh, the reason I said that the showers were so, uh, were, were, uh, scheduled so much because you needed a lot of fresh water for the batteries so that's why so this place probably smelled great when you were underway uh, when I say great I mean right where are we going tonight we're going out to the beach and out to the lighthouse before the storm comes in the sky is starting to get a little ominous Boats are coming in. Check out the lighthouse. We are here. And we started here. Here. We went from here to here.
Yes, guys. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. What did you have your wrong? Oh, wait. Some beverages while we wait out the storm. Because it's a coming. <laughs> 